Hi, Kitchisu kids. Welcome to our online worship service. I know many of you guys are missing church. I am missing church, and I'm missing you guys every Sunday. But I am so thankful that we can still worship God through our online worship service. And today is a very special day. It is Easter Sunday, and I'm so excited to talk about who Jesus is and what He has done for us. So let's get ready. Let's fold our hands. Let's close our eyes and let's start with prayer. Father, we just thank you so much that in the midst of this season, Lord, that we can still worship you, God, that even though we can't see each other on Sundays, we still can gather online and know that we are together as one body, as one church to worship you on this special day, on Easter Sunday, Lord. Um, Lord, we just thank you that we can worship you and glorify your name. Will you be with us? Will you open up our hearts? Will you open up our mind? May we love you even more today than we did yesterday God so Lord we thank you we thank you for Kishish two kids I know that they've been growing they've been praying and they've been seeking you and I know and I believe you have been answering their prayers Lord so I pray for more peace in their hearts and more joy and love we thank you Lord and we pray all this in Jesus name amen Happy Easter, everyone! I love Jesus because He helped build a bridge between us to God so we are able to connect with Him and able to go to heaven. I hope you guys are all doing well at your houses, and I hope next year will be the year where we can all celebrate Easter together at church. Bye, guys! Hello, everyone, and happy Easter. I love this day because it reminds us how God sent Jesus to die on the cross to take our punishment and that God will always love us no matter what we do. I love Jesus because he died for my sins and he, and I know that he loves me and I know that I can keep my faith in him even through hard times like we are in now. Happy Easter. Amen. Amen. So let's stand up and let's get ready for worship.
Through the darkness, your love. 
because he died on the cross to save our sin and resurrected. That's why Easter is a very special day for us. That's why I love Jesus. Easter, I love Jesus because he died for our sins even if we didn't deserve it. All right, so let's get our offerings from your chair, Bible. If you need to get it from your parents, go get it. We're gonna do offering right now. Let me say a small prayer before you put it in two hands. In respect, part of our offering, part of our worship. So let's start. Dear God, thanks for protecting our families and friends from the coronavirus. And God, thank you for letting us worship you even through these hard times. Please help us to stay strong and believe in you even through these hardships. Thank you, God, for Good Friday and Easter to show that you died on the cross for us and resurrected. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Hello, kids, too. Happy Easter. I love Jesus because he died on the cross to save us from our sins. And he's always with us when we're struggling. Happy Easter. Um, I love Jesus because he is our father and he truly loves us. And he gave his life for us even though we have to die at the age 100. And the reason being is because he died on the cross for us, but he rose back again. And in the Bible... He says that we'll have eternal life in heaven with him and all of us. We are not biologically brothers and sisters, but in heaven, 
according to that, we are brothers and sisters. And once again, happy Easter. Amen. I am so excited to worship God today, and I'm so glad that you worship with Sam and Nicole. And, you know, I love those videos that um, you guys were watching. I asked some of you guys to post the videos, and you guys did a great job. And I love that you guys know why you love Jesus. So let's get into our announcements. And a couple little bit of announcements. I have been enjoying everyone's uh, Bible reading notes and sermon notes that your parents have been sharing. And don't worry if you haven't been able to send it to me. I will read them once we gather together on church on Sunday. And please keep doing it. It's building good habits in your life. I know that one day you, when you get older, you're going to remember this day. And you're going to remember this season where you said, I remember reading the Bible every day. And I just want to let you know that every time you open up the Bible, that every time you read this Bible, God is with you. You are not alone. And you know, there are some stories that it's really hard to understand. It's okay. All you need to do is say, God, help me remember or understand this story. Or just pick one verse that you like that helps you understand who God is. Because the lesson isn't that you have to understand everything. The lesson is that you are building good habits, reading the Bible every day. This is such a good time for you guys to do that because we're not as busy, you know, and our schedules are pretty open. So my heart is that you keep going as we are spending time at our homes. And I just pray and I hope that you will always be encouraged as you read the Bible. But if you have not been receiving any of the sermon notes or any of the Bible reading plan, don't worry. I posted up my email address once again. I'm going to do this every week. So please email me. Tell your mom and dad so I can send it to you through email. All right. And I just also wanted to share that during this season, we are praying a lot. And you know what's crazy? The world has been praying a lot. I have heard the president talk about prayer. I've even heard the mayor talk about the importance of Easter. So it's kind of crazy because, you know, on the news or even on TV, we don't hear a lot about God or prayer. But because of this, because of what is happening, people have been praying a lot. And, you know, even on the Internet search, the numbers of people reading or learning about who God is, who Jesus is, has increased. It, it's been going up the number of sites that people are going in. So I believe that through this season, they realize, people have been realizing that they need God and that we need to pray. So keep praying because God is doing something during this time. So your prayers are so important. So don't give up. Keep praying. That's what it says in the Bible. That's what God tells us to keep praying. And as you guys know, some of us were on Good Friday Zoom online yesterday. We had an amazing time with me and Pastor Tim, and it was a really a good time to talk about why Jesus had to die for us and what that story was like. Well, today we're going to actually go into it once again, but we're going to continue that story with the resurrection, which is really about Easter, right? So I'm so excited. So let's get our Bibles ready. Let's get our sermon notes, let's get our pens so that we can write notes during the message so we don't forget. Amen? Amen. So let's open up our Bible to Matthew chapter 27. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 27. Oh, let's start with Matthew chapter 26. So let's get our Bibles and let's open up to Matthew chapter 26. And let's just leave it there because we're going to read the Bible a little bit often through this uh, message today. But before we do that, last week we learned about how Jesus was baptized. And the, one of the greatest things that Jesus did for us is that he was not baptized because of amazing things he did yet. He was baptized because God was preparing him for what God was going to do in him by telling everyone about Jesus, right? And what did God do? He blessed him. He said, you are my beloved son. See, Jesus didn't do the miracles yet. He didn't do anything yet. But yet, God blessed him and said, I am pleased with you. And I, and I made that really important last Sunday because I want you to know that when you believe in Jesus, when you say, I believe, Jesus, you died for my sin, and I believe of what you had done for me, you know what God does? 
He says, I am pleased with you. You are my son. You are my daughter. Why? Because now when he looks at you and me, he looks at the work of what Jesus had done for us on the cross. So we're going to go over that even more today, right? So just want to encourage you one more time that it's not based on our works, that it's not based on how good we are. It is only based on what Jesus did on the cross for us and his resurrection. And that is why he calls us his beloved son and daughter. Amen? Amen. So our salvation is not based on performance or work. Our salvation is only based on what Jesus did. And that is why I love Easter. So before we go in to it, I just want to review that this week is called the Passion Week, right? And this week we are trying to remember every day the stories of what Jesus did. And we did talk about the baptism, but during the Passion Week, we started with last Sunday that he, Jesus came in, and it was called a Palm Sunday, that he came into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey, and everyone was praising him, acknowledging he was God, right? And then during this week, one of the other stories of Passion Week is when Jesus gathers his disciples and tells them that he is going to leave soon, right? He's preparing his disciples. This is called the Last Supper. He's preparing them that Jesus is no longer going to be with them physically, but he will come back. He will come back. And they did communion. They, they um, ate the bread to remember his body, and they drank, the, they drank wine to remember his blood. And so that was what Last Supper was because Jesus wanted to let them know, don't be afraid, don't be scared. I am going to be with you. I will suffer, but I will come back. And that's really important because we know that this is going to go into the story of Jesus and how he is getting ready to die on the cross. So let's read that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26, and let's read from 47 to 51, right? And so Jesus knows he's going to get arrested. So let's read this story. Okay, let's begin. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Verse 28. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. Verse 29. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Verse 50. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up, they laid hands on Jesus, and they seized him. So we're going to stop right there in verse 50. Um, so this is what happened. So Judas, I, remember, I don't know if you guys remember, but Judas is one of his disciples, and Judas is the one that betrays Jesus and tells the Roman soldiers where Jesus is. So he gives them a kiss saying, this is him, this is Jesus. So the soldiers are arresting him, right? They're arresting him. And the question is, why did people want to kill Jesus, right? Why did people want to kill him? Well, the, is the reason why is because Jesus was claiming that he is God. He was telling everyone that all of his miracles, everything is because he is God. And the religious leaders at that time did not like it. They actually hated him. They wanted to get rid of him because they wanted people to follow them, not Jesus, right? They wanted people to follow the religious leaders. So Jesus was getting popular. People were following Jesus. They were experiencing God through Jesus. And the religious leaders said, no, I do not want that to happen. So they decided to get rid of him, and they decided to kill them. Right? So to kill him. And Judas was that betrayer to betray him. Which later on in the story, Judas actually regrets because he realized Jesus is the true God. Right? So now what happens? Let's go to Matthew chapter 26, verse, 50, verse 59 to 67. Yes. So let's go there. Okay. Verse 59. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus, that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward, 
and said, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple God and to rebuild it in three days. So Jesus is sent to the high priest, and the high priest was the, the leaders, the high leaders of the temple, of the Jewish temple, right? So they're trying to prove him, Jesus is crazy. He's telling everyone he is God, right? So that's what he said. He's telling everyone, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. You know, that sentence is very pow powerful because he's actually saying, I'm going to die, and in three days, I'm going to rise again. So they didn't really understand that. They just understood Jesus is crazy because he is saying he is God. But you and I know that he is God. He is God. So let's continue. Verse 62. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? Verse 63. But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I jure you by the living God, Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. So Jesus is quiet, and they're saying, please tell us right now if you are the Son of God. So what does Jesus say? Verse 64, Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and the coming on the clouds of heaven. And he said, yes, I am God. I am the son of God. And I am going to be with God. And you're going to see my power being displayed. Verse 65. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered blasphemy. And blasphemy is he has uttered lies. Lies about God or lies about what the temple believes in. What further witness do we need? You have now heard this blasphemy. Verse 66. What is your judgment? They answered. He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and they struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? So you see now that they're making fun of Jesus, that they are ripping his clothes off, they're basically mocking him, and they're making fun of who Jesus is. And they're saying, no way, you are not God. No way. And you know what's amazing? T till this day, there are so many people that don't believe in Jesus, that mock him. And you'll see that on TV. You'll see that on shows. You'll see that on movies. They'll use the word Jesus, you know, loosely, or they will just talk about this whole Christianity as a joke, you know? And you're gonna see as you get older, there's cartoons or there's shows that just really make fun of Jesus as if he is not God, you know? But Jesus, you know what he does? He doesn't fight back. He doesn't. He knows that this needs to happen. He knows that he will die, right? And he, you know what he was thinking while he was doing that? He was thinking about you and me. He wasn't thinking about himself. If he was thinking about himself, he would say, boom, I defeat you all. And he probably could take one finger and just knock them all down because he is God. But he didn't. Because in that moment, every time he was getting made fun of or was being slapped at or spit on, he was thinking about you and me because he loves us. Because he knew he needed to die for your sins and my sins. Not his, because he was perfect. He had no sin. So he did it, not for himself, but he did it for you and me. That is the love of God. That is why I love Jesus. And I hope that is why you love Jesus. So let's continue the story of what happens to Jesus. And so let's open up our Bible to Matthew, and I put it up here, verse, chapter 27, verses 27 to 31. Verse 27, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, verse 28, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him 
saying, Hail, King of Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. So right before he was getting ready to be crucified on the cross, on the wooden cross, right, they continued, the soldiers continued to mock him. They continued to beat him. They whipped him. They put a, and you know, a lot of times when you see pictures of Jesus, there's like this wooden crown made out of wood, but they did it to actually make fun of him. And in it, they left thorns of the wood to puncture him on the head, right? And they, they made fun and say, Hail King Jesus, laughing at him, not knowing that they were making fun of God, right? Not knowing what they were doing. But yet Jesus didn't fight back. Again, he was thinking about you and me. So let's continue reading chapter 27, verse 50, 50 to 54. We're going to jump into 50 to 54. So now he, Jesus is on the cross, right? So he's on the cross, and this is what Jesus says. And Jesus cried out again, verse 50, with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Verse 51, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And the coming out of tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those who were with him, keep, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. So what happened? Jesus cries out, right? He cries out to God, and he yields his spirit, and he dies. But in that moment, the earth shook. That's really crazy, guys. An earthquake happened, right? The temples, the robes were torn, and that's a symbol that no longer animals were going to be sacrificed, you know? And the whole earth was shaking. And imagine that. I know, like, uh, many times we always talk about the cross and what Jesus suffered. But in that moment, we got to remember what was also happening was the earth was shaking. I mean, imagine that happened. And all the soldiers and the centurion, everyone realized, whoa, Jesus is God. They were amazed at that moment that this is not a normal person that just died on the cross. That this is God who is being displayed. The Son of God, Jesus, was dying on the cross. And something was happening at that moment. And the whole earth shook. When I think about that, it just shows truly how Jesus is the Son of God. He truly is God. And at that moment, those people that were there were acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God. I think that's amazing, and I think that is so cool because they, God was proving that Jesus is the Son of God, right? And what did, the Jesus, what did Jesus' death mean for you and me? We know that he was thinking about us on that cross, in that pain for our sins, but you know what was this death meant? This death meant it is finished, and Jesus even says that. It is finished. What is finished? His death was a punishment for all of our, our debts, our penalty for sin, right? And it started with Adam and Eve, the beginning of when sin happened, when we rejected God. And the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, it was the final job, the finished work. Jesus saying, I am the one that's going to finish it. Finish the debt that you and I had to pay for our sins, and Jesus saying, I am doing it for you and me. And so when we think about the cross, we have to also remember the word, it is finished. That Jesus did it once and for all. So when you guys struggle, you know, when you did something wrong and you guys struggle with your sin and you feel like, man, God can never forgive me for that. 
It's not true. God can forgive you, even the worst sins that we do towards God. And you're saying, how can he do that? Well, you gotta think, at the, think about the cross. The cross is telling you, I am able to forgive you because it is finished. Because the work of the cross is saying that I have forgiven all sins. And if you question that, then you're questioning actually Jesus' death. Then you're saying, Jesus, eh, your death is not that meaningful. My sin is actually worse than the work that you did on the cross. That's what you're saying. So when we really believe what Jesus did on the cross, and when we sin and we feel like God didn't forgive us, in that moment, you have to say no. That's a lie from Satan. You have to say no. Jesus does forgive me. Jesus forgives me for even for the worst sin I've done because of the cross, because Jesus died on the cross. And Jesus said, it is finished. And you got to hold on to that because when you hold on to that, that belief in what Jesus did for you on the cross is actually more important than the sin that's in your heart. And that cleanses that sin in your heart, right? That's why I love Jesus because we are always forgiven by that work. Amen? Amen. That's why I love him because Jesus says it is is finished no matter what no matter how horrible that sin is if you give it to god if you give it to him and say i believe in the work of jesus i believe jesus died for this sin in my heart guess what that moment the holy spirit will come and cleanse you from the guilt of that sin from when you feel so bad and he's saying it is finished it is finished it's okay, I have forgiven you because I died for that sin. And that's when Jesus' death is greater than your worst sin. And that Jesus' death on the cross is the best thing that can happen to you. And it's the best thing that happened to me. Amen? Amen. And that's why I love Jesus. But the story doesn't even end there. This is how amazing God is because he needs to conquer that sin. He needs to conquer that sin. So here, Jesus paid for that sin, right? Jesus paid for that sin. Now, what does Jesus need to do? He needs to conquer it. He needs to say that power of that sin is no more in your life. How does he do that? The resurrection, the resurrection. And now we're gonna go into that story of what happens three days later. What happens to Jesus three days later? Now, this is the other part of the power of Jesus in our life. Not just the death of Jesus, but the resurrection of Jesus. So let's open up our Bible to Matthew chapter 28, and let's read from 1 to 10. So let's read it together. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. So Mary Magdalene and Mary, they, they wanted to see Jesus, right? They missed Jesus. They were so sad. They wanted to go there, just to, just to the tomb. And that tomb was covered by this huge rock that no one could move, that guards were there because they thought people would want to steal Jesus' body. So guards were there to protect it. So Mary Magdalene went, verse 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Another amazing, crazy earthquake was happening. And the guards were like, what's going on? What is going on? Verse 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. So an angel came, moved that stone, and he sat on that stone. Now I understand that picture when I see a, uh, an angel sitting on that stone. It literally happened. Verse 3. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Verse 5. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. 
For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. And he said, come, see the place where, I, where he lay. So the angels say, because everyone's scared, there's an earthquake, the stone is removed, they see this bright light, right? And Mary and Magdalene, and even those guards are scared. They're like, what is going on? What's going on here? And the angel's telling them, don't be afraid. Look, you're looking for Jesus? He is not here. He is risen. He is risen. Verse 7, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. Verse 8. So they departed quickly from the tomb with, great, with fear and great joy, and they ran to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. So Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene and Mary, they run, they run and they tell Jesus, right, that his body is not there. And then, Jesus appears to them, appears to disciples, verse 10. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid and go tell my brothers to go to Galilee and they will see me. They will see me. So why did Jesus need to be resurrected? One, not only did Jesus have to pay for that sin on that cross for you and me, but he had to defeat it. He had to say, this cannot control you and me anymore. So you know what? I'm going to defeat it. I am going to be alive. I am going to be risen from the dead. So not only did he defeat sin, but he even defeated Satan, right? He defeated the Satan, the lies of the enemy that says, ah, look how bad you are. Look, you will never be forgiven by God, right? Defeating Satan is not like defeating him in person, like shooting him down. But defeating Satan is actually defeating his lies. And Satan was called the father of lies. He's not the father of truth, right? So he was lies. He lies to you and me that you are not good, that you will always be, be not good. You will not be forgiven. But Jesus defeated that. Defeated that with the truth saying, look at me. I died for that sin. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. For it is finished. The work is done. And then... He was able to even defeat that by being, being alive in three days, right? In three days. So he defeated Satan, he defeated sin, and he defeated death. He had victory over death. That death had no stronghold on him, no power over him. You guys, in the history of the world, there is no one that has been resurrected except for Jesus. There is no human being that can rise again by themselves, except for Jesus. No one can do that except for God, except for God. So when you remember the resurrection, you're not just remembering that Jesus rose and say, hey guys, I'm alive. He defeated sin, he defeated Satan, and he defeated death, right? And he did that so that you and I can have an eternal life with him, so that you and I can live with God forever so that you and i can know the lies of satan when they when satan says you're not you won't, you won't be forgiven and you say no that is not true i am forgiven because of jesus right so that you and i can know that we can have victory over sin right so now what's important about the resurrection is did this really happen did Jesus really resurrect? And I know that as I'm telling you this story, you say, yes, yes, I do believe Jesus was risen, that he resurrected. But actually, many people don't believe it. And actually, they think it's false. They think that it's just a made-up story. They, they ask, is there proof? Is there proof for his resurrection? So it says, it's written in the Bible, and we're going to read this part. Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 to 15. So while they were going, behold, some of the guards went into the city and told the chief priests all that has happened, that has taken place. So remember, the earthquake happened, the, the stone was removed, 
the guards were there. They saw what happened. So they ran and they ran and told, right, the, um, the chief, the chief police or the chief priest. It's actually the chief priest, right? And what happened? So th this is what they did. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers. And 13, and said, tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. So he gave them money to the guards and said, I want you to lie. I want you to tell everyone that the disciples actually stole Jesus' body. But, you know, if you really think about it, that stone was so heavy, no, there's no way they could have moved that stone. In verse 14, and if this comes to the governor's eel, ears, we will satisfy him and keep, keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. So this is actually the story that people still believe in today. They don't believe in the resurrection. They believe that the, G that the disciples had this whole planned out and they stole the body. They stole the body. But you know what's another proof that the resurrection happened is they saw Jesus alive, right? We, we know that Mary and Magdalene saw Jesus alive, right? Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Jesus appeared to the 12 disciples. And it says in the Bible there were 500 witnesses and many more that saw Jesus alive. He wasn't a spirit. He wasn't a ghost. He literally came back alive. He would eat with them. He would sleep with them. I'm sure he went to the bathroom, right? He was fully human and fully God again. And there's, it's written in the Bible, but there's many accounts, manuscripts of this happening. There's accounts, and you need to know that to prove that the resurrection happened. And now, even in the disciples, someone like James, right, he was very doubting if this happened. And when he saw Jesus, and he touched his hands, and he saw the holes, right, when he saw Jesus in person, he believed. And we know that after this, all the disciples started preaching to everyone that Jesus not only died for their sins, but he was risen, because they experienced it with their own eyes, so this resurrection is the truth. There is proof into it. There is proof that Jesus is alive, that Jesus did not only die for our sins, but he rose from the dead. Now, how does this resurrection give us hope? How does it give us hope? How does this resurrection, now we believe that Jesus resurrected, that there is proof in this world, even um, scientists, theologians, they show that proof. If you research it, there's tons of proof that this is a historical fact. Not only did Jesus die on the cross 2,000 years ago, but three days later, he rose again from the dead. There's historical facts, not just through the Bible, but manuscripts and proof of people that did see Jesus alive, right? So now we believe that. So what does this resurrection do for you and me? We know that the death right? Death gave us freedom, gave us forgiveness of sins, that we are no longer bonded by sin, but that we are free, and that we are forgiven for our sins. But what does the resurrection do for us, right? How does the resurrection give us hope? Well, we have hope because, one, we actually have victory over the power of sin, that we can't, we can't say, okay, I, I won't cur curse anymore, right? I know when I was a kid, I prayed that God will help me not curse because I used to curse a lot <laughs> when I was little. And when I remember when I was saved, I said, God, help me, forgive me for cursing a lot and help me to not curse anymore. And I remember that day, from that moment on, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit was on my heart. And literally, over time, I stopped cursing and it did not happen anymore. It didn't happen anymore. And it's because I was reading the Bible, I was praying, and as I was growing, God changed my heart. And God gave me the power to have victory over my sin. So the resurrection gives us power over our sin, that we can change, that we can grow, that we can forgive. You know, there's many people, we, you know, a lot of times we've hurt others and we ask them to forgive us, but there's other people that have hurt us. And because of the resurrection, 
we can forgive others. We can say, you know what, I've been forgiven. Jesus defeated sin on the resurrection, and I believe that I can forgive you, right? So there's forgiveness. So we can forgive others. We can even love others, right? And there is no fear of death. That is one thing, that we don't have to be scared of death. You know, actually, during this time, there's a lot of people, even adults, who are scared. And you know what they're scared of? Not, not sickness. Yeah, sickness is part of it. But sickness, no one wants to get sick because they're scared to die. They're scared of death. That is the greatest fear of man. That is the greatest fear of humanity. And that is why a lot of people are seeking God right now. That is why a lot of people are starting to pray to God, are starting to believe in Jesus, because they have a fear of death. But you and I, because we believe in Jesus and the resurrection, and when we believe in it and believe in what Jesus did for us, we're not scared. You guys, I am actually not scared. I pray that it won't be painful, (laughs) my death, but I know where I'm going to go after. The problem for many people these days, they don't know where they're going. If you think about your grandma and grandpa, your uncle, anyone in your family who's not saved, who doesn't believe in Jesus, they're actually scared. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to even have thoughts about it because if they sit and think about it, it scares them because they don't know what's going to happen to them when they die. But you and I know what's going to happen to us when we die. That's why I'm not scared of death. I am not scared of my future and what will happen to me, right? Because of the resurrection, because of what Jesus did and defeated Satan. I can say that I'm going to be with Jesus after I die. And I pray and hope that you will say the same. That gives you joy and peace, knowing that even if I get sick, even if some bad things happen, it's okay because I am going to be with Jesus forever, for eternity, even after death. So if you know there are people in your family, if you know there's friends around you who don't believe in Jesus, I hope in this Easter Sunday that you would pray for them, that you would pray that they would be saved, that they would know that there is hope after death, that they know that they can be with Jesus after they die, right? And it's only through prayer and sharing the gospel to them. And a lot of adults, it's not even kids, guys, it's adults who get scared about death. And they don't like to talk about it. And if they get upset at you, if you bring it up, it's because they're scared, right? And in that moment, rather than being discouraged, you pray for them and say, Jesus, they're scared of death. You're the only answer for that, and you're the only one that can defeat death. Amen? Amen. So let's close this time in prayer. I know that there's many of you that trust in God and know that Jesus is amazing and that you love Jesus and you're thankful for his death on the cross, but I hope today you learn that you're thankful that he actually rose from the dead that he defeated Satan, he defeated sin, that there is hope because of the resurrection in our lives. Amen? And that's why Easter is a joyous day. It's a celebration that we are free. We are free from sin. We are free from death. And that we can have an eternal relationship with Jesus. So let's pray. Let's pray. Fold our hands and let's close our eyes. And I just want you guys to spend a few minutes on your own to pray for anyone that doesn't know Jesus. It could be a family member. It could be your friends. I know for me, it's for my father, as you guys, as many of you know, that my father's not saved, right? And I still pray for him. I've been praying for him since I was a kid. But I do have peace that God will answer. And I hope and pray that God will answer sooner than later. So I hope you spend a few minutes thinking of someone around you or friends around you who are not saved, who are scared of death, that they would find hope in Jesus. Dear Jesus, 
we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the death and the resurrection that you paid the penalty for all of our sins. But also, Lord, we thank you that you defeated sin, that you defeated death, that you defeated Satan. Lord, we thank you that we have hope now, that we are no longer scared, that we are no longer worried about our future or what will happen to us if we got sick. But we do pray for our family and our friends who don't know Jesus. We do pray that they would be saved, that they would have hope in Jesus, that they would have a relationship with Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for the work you have done in our lives. And we celebrate today that you are an amazing God. You did this all because you love us. We thank you for that. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Easter, kids too. I miss you all. And I'll keep praying for you. Hi, kids too. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing great at home with your family. I know it's hard to stay home all the time, but we could do it because God is with us. He is with us all the time. I hope everyone to have a great Easter weekend and hope to see you soon. Happy Easter! Hi everybody! Um, I miss you guys a lot. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and I'll be praying for you guys. Happy Easter! Uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye! Hello, it's Heather Teacher. Happy Easter, everybody. I miss everybody. I miss you all. I hope you're all staying healthy, safe, prayerful, and I can't wait to see everybody. I hope we're all back together so we can worship together soon, okay? Happy Easter again. I miss you all. Bye. Hi, kids to families. How you guys are doing? I'm DC Jenny Teacher. I'm doing so well like this. Uh, I pray all of kids to families staying healthy and safe and also I really pray we all going through this season soon. Thank you. Miss you guys. Bye. Happy Easter. Christ has risen. Stay safe. I really miss you guys. Thank you. Alright, have a great Easter. Celebrate with your family, celebrate with your friends on Zoom, whatever it may be. Let's celebrate today for the work that Jesus has done in our life. Amen? Amen. And I will see you soon. Bye.